Good morning, Grade 4, and welcome to the science lesson for today. Today, we will be learning about invertebrates. But before we jump into the topic, there are a few goals we need to set. Today's goal is that we should be able to describe the features of invertebrates in the garden. But before we get started, we have to set some goals. And hopefully, together, by the end of this lesson, we will be able to achieve these goals. The goal for today is to describe the features of invertebrates in the garden. We all know that animals are living things. They eat, they move, they breathe, they reproduce. But within the animal kingdom, there is a huge variety of animals. For instance, look at the crow and then look at the tiny butterfly. Or look at the giant elephant and look at the gigantic whale. And then you have the speedy fox and the speedy horse. And the cheetah that runs very fast. This is the diversity of life. But within this diversity, there are marked differences, very prominent differences, that classify animals into different groups. The first difference is vertebrates versus invertebrates. Vertebrates are animals with a backbone and invertebrates are animals without a backbone. We human beings do have a backbone. Does that make us a vertebrate? I want you to think over it. Here is a picture of a few vertebrates for you to help you understand the term vertebrate better. The key concept of a vertebrate is that it has a backbone. Place your hand over your backbone and feel it. You should always take care of your backbone. It's a very fragile area of your body. Students, here is a picture of the diversity that is the variety of invertebrates for you. What's really interesting is that some of these invertebrates are even found in the garden. Remember, invertebrates are animals without a backbone. An interesting fact about invertebrates is that 95% of them account for all the animal species on planet Earth. That's a very large percentage. Invertebrates range from ants to bees butterflies and moths, bugs, beetles, grasshoppers and crickets, earthworms and even dragonflies. They are a very diverse group of animals. Look at them. Some of them have wings, some of them do not have wings. I see some with very prominent legs and then there's some without the legs. That's a lot of diversity in the features of invertebrates. Folks, here's a picture of a couple of invertebrates for you. Now, what's so interesting is some of these invertebrates might be in your garden right now. There are also invertebrates in your house. For instance, the ant. Yes, the ants are everywhere. So once again, just a gentle reminder, invertebrates are animals without a backbone. An interesting fact about invertebrates is that they account for 95% of all animal species. That's a very big number. Invertebrates include bees, ants, beetles, bugs, butterflies and moths, grasshoppers, crickets, earthworms and even dragonflies. Students, here is a picture of a variety of invertebrates for you. This shows the diversity of invertebrates. What's interesting is that some of these invertebrates are even present in your garden. Remember, invertebrates are animals without a backbone. But an interesting fact about them is that they account for 95% of all animal species on planet Earth. Invertebrates range from ants to bees to butterflies and moths, bugs, beetles, dragonflies, earthworms, and even grasshoppers and crickets. And if you take a look at this picture, you would see there is a lot of diversity. Some have wings, some do not have wings. Keeping in mind the previous picture with the diversity of invertebrates in it, what all features did you observe? 
Did you observe any invertebrate with wings? Or any with antennas? Perhaps shells? Or even segmented bodies? What features do you observe in this invertebrate? Can you guess which invertebrate this is? Do you think the body is segmented? And how about this invertebrate? Can you figure out which one it is? Look how slimy it is and it seems very soft to touch. It's so wiggly and flexible. Oh, it's flexible because it does not have a backbone. It's an invertebrate. Oh, and how about this little fellow? That's a grasshopper. That is an invertebrate too. It does not have a backbone. And here is the butterfly, one of the most beautiful invertebrates from the animal kingdom. The butterfly does not have a backbone either because it's an invertebrate. I'm sure we're all familiar with this invertebrate. It's an ant. It's time to test our knowledge about invertebrates. What are invertebrates? That's your class assessment. And to give any five examples. Well, invertebrates are animals without backbones, such as earthworms, butterflies, millipedes, snails, dra dragonflies, moth, and even cricket. Here is a short class assessment for you. The first question is, what are invertebrates? And the answer is easy to figure out if we look at all the invertebrates we have looked at. Invertebrates are animals without backbone. Yes, that's the answer. Invertebrates are animals without backbone. And if you were to give a few examples, the examples would be earthworms, millipedes, snail, dragonflies and cricket. Or you could even add more, for instance, ants, bugs, bees, butterflies. If you don't have access to a garden, you can still find an invertebrate and look at it. Look for an ant. Ants are everywhere, even inside the house. If you do not have access to a garden, that's completely fine. You can still find an invertebrate, for instance, an invertebrate such as the ant inside your house and make your observations. 